Hey everybody, I am Sai World of Warcraft, and welcome to another StarCraft 2 commentary. Before I get too far into it, I want to announce that I am streaming today, Friday, July 22nd at 2 p.m. PST. I'll probably be going for about four hours at least. I'll start out with ladder. Once I lose a bunch of ladder games because I'm terrible at StarCraft 2, I'll probably move on to custom games or uh, some practice games. I mean custom games like non-real StarCraft 2. Uh, I'll go to some practice games, maybe some King of the Hill with some fans, stuff like that. So hopefully you guys, you will show up for that. It's justin.tv slash starcraft And uh, I do announce when I'm streaming on Twitter and Facebook, facebook.com slash starcraft, twitter.com slash starcraft. Anything that has a social network, the extension will be size starcraft. So check that out if you want. I do not spam your inboxes or whatever with tons of stupid stuff and garbage uh, I try to keep it to a minimum only in necessities so I hope you do like me or follow me because I'm very sensitive and uh, I need everybody to like me if everybody doesn't like like me my life is over so uh, you don't want me to die do you no you don't so make sure to go on there anyway duckload raw setting up a pylon in a position that would suggest a forge fast expansion I guess I should announce who was actually playing in the top left as the red protest we have duck load raw also known as white raw not the fastest APM player as you can see his average is only 100 but he is so damn good man he's incredibly smart with his unit movements and his micro is sick as uh, the dogs on those Sarah McLaughlin commercials and, uh, and that is sick man I love animals I really do love animals so please don't judge me based on that uh, analogy but the cool thing about Waira is he is so damn old and he is so damn slow. He's he's just like if you want to play StarCraft but you don't think you have the APMs or you think you're too old, watch this guy. He's one of the most successful players out there and he is so old and so slow that you wouldn't even expect him to be so damn good. But he is and it's awesome. That's why I love watching him and his special tactics. He's called his special tactics. That's Russian. I don't know if that's his accent. What is he? He's uh, he's European. I think he's Swedish, maybe? I don't know. What's a Swedish accent? My special tactics. No, that's still Russian. <laughs> I can't do accents. Anyway, uh, his opponent is going to be MTW Dimaga, another European. So I'm assuming this was played on the European server. Uh, it was part of something called King of the Hill. I don't know if there is some kind of tournament called King of the Hill in Europe. Or if it's just a King of the Hill show match set up by someone every once in a while. But uh, you guys will know that better and you can probably clarify that in the comments. But hopefully it is a solid match because solid matches are better than uh, liquid matches. Uh, because liquid matches can't light anything on fire. Uh, I guess you could call lighter fluid a liquid match. Yeah, that'd work. Except you would need fire with the lighter fluid to actually light it while a solid match can light itself uh, on certain surfaces. I used to get those wooden matches that you could light on all surfaces and just light them on my pant leg. It was pretty cool. And look at this, man. 893 APM. And he, I have more APMs than that. And White was like 86 times better than me in bed and in StarCraft. So it's really impressive watching him play. I just love it. So it looks to be a standard opening from White Raw. White Raw. Right Raw. White Raw. Duck Load Raw. And Cybernetic score is now going up. He was going the forge. He wasn't going to do anything tricky because Demaga did not fast expand. Probably a smart move from Demaga. Cannon rushes can be uh, pretty painful to deal with. And these links might pick off this probe. They can get an attack and before the probe recharges its shield. So you got to be careful about that. White Rock carelessly losing a probe. And a third hatchery. Wow. Already from... Um, uh, Demaga. So, if you guys go up against a forge fast expand and you're wondering what to do, you can go two base all in, or you can go quick three base, and that's exactly what Demaga is doing. And notice the timing of this: around 5:20 is when he threw down that hatchery, and he's still droning up. Oh, and he actually picks off the probe with intercepting drones. Very nice play right there. And actually, does he even have a zealot? I don't think he not even has a zealot there. So, uh, Demaga could have gone for like a 12 link run by or something like that and been really successful but you know good players kind of know what good players are going to do other good players are going to do and I think White Raw kind of expected no, you know you're not going to do that there's no way you're going to do that I'm pretty sure there's a wall up there I mean uh the opening there yeah yeah there's definitely is doesn't really matter not that big of a deal and you notice Demaga's only made four links all game and as a result Despite a Protoss fast expanding, he is ahead by one Harvester, and that's not something you see in the early game against a Protoss player, but, uh, you know, Demog is a boss, and so he's allowed to pull those kind of maneuvers. maneuvers. Stargate, 
Uh, this is a very common opening to follow up the fast expand from uh, Protoss, for Protoss, because it prevents any kind of roachling aggression. Yes, the roaches and lings will do some damage to the uh, ground units. They might even kill a forge or gateway or something, but the void raids will clean up so easily that that doesn't even matter. Your Zerg opponent will be so far behind because they had to get units instead of drones. And now he's getting a fourth hatchery, not feeling comfortable taking another expansion, perhaps a bit too far away, doesn't like the, the far rally. And uh, this is actually really interesting, already at four hatches, seven minutes and 40 seconds into the game, so this is the macro game to end all macro games so far. And uh, one thing I like about this is it's very clear that he knows exactly what he's doing. He's still on two gas on 46 drones. He's just now getting his third and fourth gas and when you're gonna mass expand like this you really really need minerals incredibly bad. Only one geyser at this expansion though. That's kind of sad. Uh, just because you're gonna have to fund drones and hatcheries and everything and overlords at so many locations that you know if you already get gas early yes your tech might be higher but it's just not a good idea to get gas early. Demaga realizing that and waiting till pretty decent fat saturation almost almost ideal saturation at his main as and his expansion to even throw up those additional gases. Now this void rate is going to be annoying. I don't see it doing much more than uh, than just harassing this expansion for a bit. And he is following up that Stargate with a robotics facility. Pretty normal. Another Phoenix on the way. So one void rate and several Phoenix it looks like. I'm not sure what these Phoenix are going to be used for because Damaga has these the base is pretty well covered with these spores. It's kind of weird that he's placing them right here and doesn't have one like back here and then one, I don't know, up here somewhere, up here somewhere. I don't know, he probably knows better than me. Hydrogen on the way. And a third base preparing for White Raw. Here come the Phoenix, just for scouting purposes, I suppose. I guess he wants at least two so we can actually kill stuff. With oh, and he does catch this probe. Wow. How good do you have to be to catch a probe that's about to take a fourth base at just some arbitrary time in the game? Very impressive. I want to see his wiener. Now White Raw with the tiny armor. Let's check out the units count here. Three Zerglings still for Demaga. Only three Zerglings. That's unbelievable. How do you know your opponent isn't just going to move out with like three Zealots or something? That's just, that's crazy. He does have five Queens, however. Uh, a couple for Spreading Creep, I'm assuming. Defending against any air forces that might be able to penetrate these spores. Uh, penetrate the spores. They look like vaginas. See that? Yeah. Spines and spores, that's no coincidence. They are the male and female buildings of the Zerg race. There we go, there's some Hydras. So he was holding out till Hydras. Man, it just seems like they're doing everything so slow, but that's because this game is so macro. It's like they agreed beforehand. All right, all right, here's what we're going to do. I don't know what that accent is either. God, I'm so terrible. Uh, <laughs> it's like they agreed beforehand that they're just gonna go sick macro and that's it. And Namaga actually moving out with 10 Hydras. Oh, more than that. 10, 17, oh, 15, 16 Hydras and 2 Queens, oh, and these 4 Phoenix being ever so annoying, not only picking off 1 and a half Hydras, but delaying the attack a little bit for this, the Colossus, which is as close as it gets to a hard counter to Hydras, man. Colossi are so sick against Hydras, they're just so slow, they can barely uh, even attack them, even without Thermal Lances, the Hydras do have the same amount of range, but Colossi are much faster without Creep. Or not much faster, probably slightly faster. Uh, well, exactly the same, so fuck you guys. <laughs> Close enough. And this is it, this is just where experience comes into play, because any other player would be like, oh, well, I'm attacking with 17 Hydras this late into the game. It's not going to do anything. But Damaga, he has a game sense. He knows that his opponent ha uh, fast expanded. He knows that he has three bases. And this is actually going to turn out really bad for Damaga, though. <laughs> nice force fields. Oh, he picked up the Colossus. Wow. That's surprising, but he's still going to get cleaned up. These Zerglings, if actually if these Zerglings are able to get in, this, this could be bad for White Rat. I cleaned up every single Hydra on the left side. These Queens are doing who knows what. And yeah, he will clean it up. Not the best management from White Rat. He actually lost that Colossus really soon. I didn't really see what happened. I assumed he would be able to micro back or something, but he didn't, which was uh, surprising. And White uh, Demaga continuing to rally. I, I feel like um, something other than Hydras would be good at this point, while there is only one Colossus. Hydras without creep, I don't know. They're just a bad unit in general. They're just not that good. Especially alone. And 
So Duckload Rod does hold that off. The Harvester Count is now 58 to 67, and that's what happens when Zerg starts making units. They fall behind in the Harvester Count. Demaga actually going to move out again with Hydras. I don't know what he's thinking. The last Hydra attack didn't even kill that much, and uh, uh, Duckload still has plenty of units. He's warping in three additional units. He's going to have enough for a Guardian, a Guardian Shield, which I hope he uses. And perhaps this was just a rally until he gets more units and yeah he's going to be sending in a lot of links and one thing he wants to try to do with these links links are extremely good against protoss just even if they don't get to attack they're great meat shields until colossi or storm come out and there is there are two colossi so he's going to have to deliberately focus down those colossi unfortunately there is an observer around always good to keep an overseer with your army to pick off these observers um, it's not so much the cost that you're worried about in picking off observers it's you're worried about them having to use their robotics bay to make another observer instead of a colossus uh, it's worth it just to get an overseer for that and of course it's annoying uh, I guess the cost is kind of annoying anyway bad concave right here not the best way to approach this boss I just tearing apart these hydras this isn't even climactic at all what are you doing Damaga trying to focus down something I don't even know what he's trying to focus down still making hydras and it seems like at this point you'd want to make roaches and hydras at least if not just roaches no spire to be seen 12 more hydras to be seen and despite uh, Damaga's good macro on spending compared to white rose who's actually stockpiling several mineral pieces um, it's not gonna matter it looks like so he's three base to four base now he's taking his fourth up here and he has no response to these Colossi. He's trying to get Infestors. It's not going to happen. He still has to wait 50, 80 seconds. Well, he's actually got to wait 15 more seconds and then 50 more seconds because he doesn't want to start them before Pathogen lands. And this is going to be ugly. He's got a nice spread. Actually, a decent number of Hydras. If he's on creep and he's able to pick up these three Colossi, good things could happen. The Guardian Shield is so good at that sentry is tucked in the middle of the army. And this is, ugh, this is ugly. He does pick up two Colossi, but the bulk of the army still remains. And uh, they're able to do plenty of DPS on their own, Demaga, so I don't see exactly what you're going to accomplish with uh, Hydra Ling. It's kind of weird. I don't know. I don't know why he did this. I wish I knew what was going through his mind. It's like, I'm going to get Hydras against uh, Colossi. All right, you have Colossi. I'm going to keep getting Hydras against Colossi. All right, well, good job. You killed my Hydras. I'm going to keep getting Hydras and, and Lings against Colossi. Oh, that, that didn't work. I, <laughs> I don't get it. He has not come close to destroying Demaga's army this entire game. And, you know, he's spending and macroing like a boss. 64 Harvesters, probably not as much as you want. And uh, see, White Rod losing track of his units a little bit. I was pumping him up... Uh, Hyping him up in early game about such good unit control, but you know at this point he's probably playing pretty relaxed. He realizes he's got an advantage in this game. He's delaying a lot of mining at this third base. The fourth base of the Zerg is up, uh, with really good at saturation actually. But uh, the main almost mined out, and he's got a lot of pressure. Another Colossus moving out. Void Rake, Colossus Blink on the way. It's a couple of probes and losing another Colossus. I don't know what the heck Duckload Ra is doing. He's letting the manga kind of back into this game. Uh, his his gateway forces alone could probably just move in right now and just kill everything, but well, maybe not. That's a lot of links. But for some reason, he's not doing that at the moment. Another Colossus going down. Back up links. Back up links. Wait for your reinforcements. I don't like that he's sending that links in alone. They will probably pay for themselves, but I, uh, I feel like he should wait for Hydras or something. And down go all those links and sending in a little platoon there. And kill this Overseer. Oh my... I mean, Observer. Oh my gosh, Observers. So damn good. Harvest account now 65 to 77. And Duckload Raw actually moving out. I feel like he could just uh, go in and kill him right now. Just with a couple nice force fields, Guardian Shield. Just move in and win. Move in and win. That's the. There we go. Move in and win. Now he only has two robotic spays. And how many gateways does he have? Five gateways, two robotic spays on four bases. And this is why his money has been so high throughout the game. He just hasn't had enough infrastructure to fund. Uh, to spend all this money. He is getting some void ray, massing up some void rays, and the most dangerous composition I can think of for a toss is Colossus, Sentry, well, like a couple sentries, void ray stalker. It's so damn beasty. Even just like stalker or uh, uh, Colossus, void ray is really good. And that's because a lot of Zerg players will kind of neglect getting air, as we can see in this game. Demog is choosing not to get any air at all. I don't know why. Fifth base going up for Damaga, and a fifth base going up for or, uh, White Rock and Damaga, I should say. 
Yeah, just one Colossus. I, there's the second Colossus. He does have 1-1 one, one upgrades. Let's check out the upgrades on Damaga. 1-1 one, one upgrades for Damaga as well on both his units. So he's spreading his upgrades pretty thin. And second attack upgrade. And Neural Parasite coming out. Yes, this is what I like to see. Will it be a response to Colossi? I doubt it. If he does try to Neural Parasite the Colossi, Blink Stalkers will just go in and tear them up. So hopefully we see Fungal Growths instead. I don't know if we will because I don't think Duckload Raw has revealed his Blink Stalkers yet. At this point in the game, you kind of have to expect that they do have Blink Stalkers, but this is just a deadly, scary, scary army. I I hate seeing that many Stalkers, man. They just they seem to live forever, and you're blinking them back, and like you pick up the Colossi, and you're like, yes, I killed all the Colossi, but then it's like, oh, there's like 60 Stalkers left. Well, I'm not sure what to do that about that. He might actually blink up here and focus down the hatchery and then blink back down. That wouldn't be a bad idea. His army is out of position. Now, he doesn't have an Observer scouting out that army right now. He doesn't have an Observer anywhere near it. But uh, he could have done that. Doesn't really need to. Three Colossi, four Colossi will do the trick. And a Void Ray. Oh my gosh, this Void Ray has been beating on this hatchery for a long time. It's now going to go down. It's three base to five base. Protoss at 200. Not something you want to do with Zerg. Oh, and these Infestors going down without any cause. And oh, this is, this is ugly. Alright, so this is what you don't want to do against a Protoss player as a Zerg. You don't want to get links that are directly countered by the most powerful anti-ground unit in the game, arguably, the Colossus. So, yeah. Uh, GG from Damaga. Uh, I feel like he macroed it very well. His decision to expand a third time was a good one. He just got the wrong units. He just got shitty units. He got Hydras and Lings and eventually Infestors against Col uh, Colossus Stalker and didn't even need any Zelts or anything. Just Colossus Stalker, a couple sentries, and held this attack off fairly easy, easily with these and that's it so i hope you guys enjoyed that and learned a little bit about it and i am streaming at 2 p.m so remember to check it out thanks for watching